thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Kylie Pring. I'm a physical therapist with Agile, and today I want to offer you up some ergonomic tips while working from home. I know that many of us have been thrust into working from home and sharing our space with our family or our loved ones. And, you know, naturally we're just making do with what we have. You know, making makeshift desks out of our dining room tables, kitchen counters, or even our sofas and, and our beds. So I'd like to offer you some creative ways to make our workplace at home a little more ergonomic. So thanks for joining me. Today, I just want to start off with talking about ergonomics, what it is. It's the design for people. It's designing for people, if you will. It's the science of fitting a workplace to the person's needs. Okay. It aims to increase both efficiency and productivity and also prevent or reduce any discomfort. I mean, just imagine if you work from a computer and you have documents to review, you want those documents to be as close to you as possible. You don't want to be one way and then turn and look at those documents. Um, doing that all day long can cause some problems, okay? So before I offer up some tips with some live action examples, I just want to talk to you about a few bullet points, uh, talk to you about um, some posture beliefs and misconceptions and what's going on in the research these days, okay? The first bullet point was pretty hard for me to stomach as a physical therapist. Um, studies have shown that there's no single correct posture. There's no strong evidence that supports that there's an optimal posture that exists or even that avoiding an incorrect posture can prevent back pain, okay? That was, that's hard because I teach that all day, but I get that the research is is out there for the normal general healthy public okay um i can understand this better when i look around me look at my my, my people um there are different postures out there and that is normal there's normal variation to the spinal curvature all right we all don't look like clones so i get that um just imagine i'm five two and i have to stand up and look up to talk to people mostly, and most people that I know that are at least six foot tall hunch a little bit because everyone else is so far below them. All right, so it is natural. Um, posture also can offer us important insight into people's emotions, thoughts, or even body image. I mean, think of the days where you go into work and everything's just working for you. Your boss even taps you on the back. You can strut around the office with your head held high, chest up, but then there are days where you just feel defeated, where nothing you've done is running or working properly. Your kids may be misbehaving. You're just exhausted and you just need to relax and you just hunker down. So posture just offers us insight as well, okay? The next bullet point I wanna chat about was studies have found that it's safe to adopt more comfortable postures. Isn't that nice? Um, everyone slouches because it's, it's restful. Sometimes everyone just needs a break. Just imagine when you're in the gym and you're doing your sets. You need a break in between sets to allow the muscles to relax and recover, right? And that's what we need to do. Um, but as much as it's safe to adopt more comfortable postures, changing positions and postures can provide symptom relief, all right? The next thing I want to talk to you about is the spine. It's actually pretty robust and adaptable, okay? It's not as tenuous or fragile as some healthcare practitioners have made it out to be, All right? For the healthy population, it's pretty robust. Um, our bodies are resilient. It can get a job done under certain duress just to get the goals achieved, okay? So let's trust and listen to our bodies. Next, sitting. Sitting is not as dangerous as many research has placed on us. You know, the sitting is the new smoking kind of thing. And for the normal general healthy population, that is, that is true. Sitting is not dangerous. You can sit for more than half an hour without any problems. Just think of all the classes we've had to sit through. That's at least 50 minutes. Think about the movies and movie theaters that we've sat in. That's at least an hour and a half, all right? But as much as sitting is not as dangerous, it's still, studies have still shown that moving and changing positions is actually important, all right? That being physically active is overall healthy for us, okay? So the underlying kind of emotion and rule here is 
change positions, change positions, change environments throughout the day that keeps us happy and healthy. Um, major rule, do what's comfortable and change positions. But, you know, in order to improve the body's ability to work and increase our body's tolerance to endure daily stresses, you also have to keep in mind four other things. Sleep well, eat healthy, find out ways to manage your stress, and exercise, okay? That helps us endure what we have to endure during these times, All right? So without further ado, we're going to go and watch and do an ergonomic assessment. As much as I said, there's no optimal posture. Uh, ergonomics is, is, is about finding optimal ways for our bodies to move and reduce hazard, reduce discomfort, just so that we're not in that same position all day long and doing that same stress on our bodies all day long, okay? So why don't we follow me, come along, and we're gonna go find an example of making a makeshift workstation. We're gonna start off at the dining room table. So here we go. This is Lindsay. She is sitting at her dining room table. We can go scan all the way up and down. So as much as this is not ideal or optimal, she can still be in this position for about half an hour or longer if she has no problems, if you will. She can be in this position and she'll be fine. What we're promoting again is changing positions throughout the day, changing also settings and environments, okay? So let's start off. Most of us that can actually work from a dining table are using laptops, okay? Um, so we'll go ahead and do this ergonomic assessment. So sitting here and watching her work, um, what we want ideally is that that laptop screen or the monitor that you would use the top of the monitor is actually eye level so that her resting gaze is slightly down so she doesn't really stress her eyes or her necks to look at that computer um, for too long, okay? But again, she can still be in this posture, but uh, I'm gonna show you more ideal positions, okay? So because this table looks like it's too high or that seat, if you can see here, is a little too short for her, you know, we're gonna use what we have in the home. So for her, Lindsay, can you bend your left elbow, show the people, okay? So for her, if she stayed in this too long, because it's too high, it's gonna create a shrugging of her shoulders. And you can also see with how her posture is, her head starting to tilt forward just to kind of look at that, the laptop right there. So how we're gonna change this, since we can't change the seat, we can make certain modifications. So one of my ideas, all right. Lindsay, can you stand up? Okay, let's try and take one of these couch pillows. You want to have a seat there? Let's see if this is high enough for you. What we're trying to do is elevate her enough where her shoulders can relax and her elbows and wrists can stay at a 90 degree angle or even slightly down so she's not stressing her wrist or her elbow to kind of hold that position while she's on the laptop. And as much as this look like it elevated her, you can still see her, her, her elbow, nice shirt, her elbow still creates this a little higher um, angle here. So we'll try one more pillow. Again, finding creative ways to get ourselves more ergonomic at home. So if you can see that much better, see if you can move your hair. Okay. So her shoulders can relax a little bit, her elbows and her wrists, can you show me? Yeah, her wrists can stay at level or slightly below level so that she's not stressing those muscles to, to hold up and type all day long, okay? So yes, we still have a problem with her neck. Again, she can still be in this position, um, but one thing you can do is find things that can elevate that computer, that laptop. So if you have any Amazon boxes or textbooks around, that's one way you can elevate that. And you can see she's already changing position. It was her elbows were bent initially and then now she's moving them forward. And it's about changing position so that you're not stuck in, in, in one position the whole time. All right, so let me find this. We're gonna try just using something like this. Lizzie, can I have you lift the laptop for a second? So that is 
a little bit better for her eyes and her neck, but you can see that made her elongate here. So if you do have the means with a laptop, this technically can go higher for her neck, but that's gonna make her reach a little bit further and higher. So if you do have the means, I usually tell people you can use the laptop as strictly as a monitor. So in this case, she can use this as a monitor and, and if she had a wireless keyboard or a mouse, Okay, we're going to use this as an example as a wireless keyboard. She can place that right there, right? And then she can also pretend she's working on her keyboard here. And that is her, her, her monitor there, all right? So that is more of the ideal workstation. If she had this work set up where that is actually a wireless keyboard, ideally I'd want to lift this monitor up a little bit more. So a couple more books would do her some good on that. But because this isn't just a simple monitor, it's a laptop, she can angle it down. That's actually not bad on her neck right there, okay? But ideally, top of the monitor, not the screen, is eye level to you so that your gaze is naturally down at the screen. All right, so that's that position right now, but I wanted to get to her legs. I like how I elevated it her here because her hips are higher than her knees that allows her back to stay in neutral position here um, she can't sustain this i mean not a lot of people can sustain this posture all day long um, most people have something to support their backs here so we can add another pillow for that but i wanted you to see this angle where her her hips can actually go a little bit below 90. and then her feet if she had any knee problems you can see that her feet actually can't touch the ground so that's not going to help that's not going to help her support her spine. So again, get creative. Go find what you have around the house. Who uses these these days? This these days. Um, so I'm just going to use this as her step stool. Let's see that, Lindsay. Can you get your feet flat on that at all? She can, actually, if she sits properly. So knees, hips a little bit low, or knees a little bit lower than the hips. Knees about 90 degrees. It can go slightly out, but making sure... She has a surface where she, her feet can go flat on the floor. All right, so now if Lindsay pretended that she was using that laptop from, or sorry, the keyboard, is the keyboard? All right, that is ideal position, especially down to her feet here. All right, it's just to be on the dining room table. Um, yeah, and then again, for her paperwork and her mouse, it's pretty close to her. You don't want her reaching for that so that there's less, so that there's any stress on her joints there. Okay. We're going to move on. We're going to go to the kitchen counter. Can we go to the kitchen counter, please? All right. So what we would do for that. Okay. So Lindsay has the ability and has a kitchen counter where there's enough space for her to work. So we can see even in this position, She's trying to lean forward and reach forward. I would actually tell her to bring her laptop closer to her so she's not reaching too far. Yeah, that gets her back a little more lined up. And again, there's technically no bad position, but there's more optimal positions for ergonomics, okay? So we can see that her elbow looks good, but because um, her wrists are down on the table like that, they crank up a little bit. So I would probably, figure out ways to elevate that here, all right? And you can see her head is starting to tilt way down. And again, it's not bad to be in this position, just not for too long, okay? So same thing like we did at the, at the dining room table here. She can change up from this position every once in a while and then putting this underneath it. Okay, she can actually work in this position. Something lower actually might be better for her overall because you can see now that helps her neck a bit, but it still cranks it up. So you can play around and find different, um, different things to elevate that laptop there. Can we switch for a second? Let's see that. Okay, so that made it better for her wrist and her hands with that position. She can also be here, she can also reach out. Again, it's about changing positions, changing settings all day long, right? And if she wanted to do that example that we had as dining room table, where she can put this back up. She can use this as a monitor. And if she had access to a separate keyboard and mouse, all right, 
that's as ergonomic as we can get for this situation here. Okay, and depends on what, again, what you have around the house to elevate that. How are you feeling, comfortable? Okay, so last position, we're gonna check about working on the couch, which I know some of us are doing in front of the TV. So let's head on over. All right, so if she were to choose sitting on the couch, let's just see here, so you can see all that. This is how she is right now. So one of the things about chair support is optimally for backs, we want our backs 90 degrees or slightly back to about 110. She's going a little further back than that, okay? So what you can do is simply take one of your throw pillows that you have in the house. Can you sit forward for me? And you can simply do this. This creates a little bit of a lumbar support. It gets her to come forward a little bit more so there's less stress on her low back there. And as much as this is okay on her hands, it's still a little low, but depending on angling and the glare from, from light, she can tilt this so her neck can stay in neutral position. But we can also simply take one of those other couch pillows, look up here, please. Do that. And now she can work in front of the house. Sorry, in, in, on the couch. <laughs> in the front of the house. All right, basics for sitting on the couch. In general, just be comfortable. So today's ergonomics, as much as I gave you tips and we know that there's no optimal position per se, um, listen to your body, find positions that are comfortable for you. Remember that sitting and slouching are not dangerous. And just as each person moves differently, so will we work differently in different setups and each work posture is as, as unique as each person is. All right, so I hope that was helpful. Again, change positions, change settings, go outside, do some morning huddles, walks um, while you're walking, but get some sunshine and stay healthy, everyone. Thank you for joining me and hopefully that was helpful. If you need our help, we're at agilept.com. Thank you so much, bye-bye.